In the previous lecture, we discussed the non-degenerate perturbation theory and we considered a small perturbation. Now, in the non-degenerate perturbation theory, we actually solved the equation that H psi n is equal to E n psi n where H was the perturbed Hamiltonian which was the combination of the non-perturbed and the perturbed Hamiltonian. So this H prime was the perturbation and we were having some known solutions. Among the known solutions, the first known solution was that when the unperturbed Hamiltonian applies on this one, then it gives E n 0 psi n 0. And the wave functions psi n, this is the unperturbed wave function psi n 0 plus psi n 1, the first order perturbation to the wave function plus psi n to the second order perturbation and the so on. Like this is the first order correction to the wave function, the second order correction to the wave function and so on. And the for the energy, the E n, the unperturbed energy E n 0 plus E n 1, the first order correction to the energy then second order correction to the energy and so on. We have also clarified this thing that as we go on to the more orders of correction then their magnitude becomes small and small. Their contribution becomes less and less. So the first order correction to the energy we found that it is E n 1 and this is equal when we consider the unperturbed wave function and we apply the perturbed Hamiltonian on it and again the unperturbed wave function. So this is the first order correction to the energy. Similarly, the first order correction to the wave function psi n1 we found is summation on m such that it is not equal to n and then psi m0 h prime psi n0 whole divided by e n0 minus e m0 and then psi m0 and the second order correction to the energy which is E n2 this is equal to summation on m for one value means it is not equal to it and this is psi m0 means this one psi m0 h prime psi n0 but this is now mod square here divided by E m E n 0 minus E m 0. Now in this let me review the things a little bit. This is the first order correction to the energy just you apply on the unperturbed wave function the perturbation in the form of Hamiltonian. Here, when you find first order correction to the wave function or the second order correction to the energy, then E n 0 minus E m 0 is there. E n is one means one unperturbed state. E m is another unperturbed state. Now, if these, these are two levels, and these two levels are having distinct energies and that's why we say that this is a non-degenerate perturbation theory. 
like each level will have its own energy non degenerate if the case will come for the degenerate perturbation theory degenerate means more than one level shares the same energy like for example in an orbit if you are having different orbitals then all the orbitals are sharing the same energy they are possessing the same energy so in that situation it will be a degenerate perturbation theory now this these equations will not work for the degenerate perturbation theory because if these two energies comes out to be the same two different levels having the same energies then it will be a degenerate perturbation theory and it will become undefined so these equations will not work for these will work only for the non degenerate perturbation theory such that every state will have its own specific energy and later on we will uh, study the degenerate perturbation theory then we will consider the situation whether we are considering two levels which are having the same energy are more than two levels so this is the uh, summary of the lecture that we covered uh, the last time now this one when we solve an example on this one then we will come to know that what we are actually doing so today we will solve three problems on this one and we have already solved a couple of examples during the previous lecture today we will solve some problems and this is problem number 6.1 problem 6.1 it says that if we consider if we consider an infinite square well so the problem is based on infinite square well for which we have already derived in the second chapter the wave functions the energies and now we will consider that situation and in the infinite square well you have uh, just introduced a delta potential like you are having an infinite square well this is an infinite square well for example means x on this side and here you are having v of x undefined potential on the walls and zero potential inside this was infinite square well this was having width okay this was having width equals to a for this we have already derived the wave function psi n and psi n was equal to 2 over a sin n pi x over a this is the wave function that we have derived in e n is equal to n square pi square h bar square over 2 m a square is this was the situation in which we were having no perturbation so we write zero here and zero here that these are the unperturbed case and now let's say inside of this well now i introduce it a by 2 means at half of the width i introduce a delta function potential like this one this is now a delta function potential which is at the center of it in reality its width is going to zero so it is just a straight line going up and down but in order to show you this thing that it is not a line but it is a Dirac delta function i have just given some width to this one and h prime in this situation is equal h prime is equal to alpha times delta function which is x minus a over 2 this is the perturbation now when you introduce this perturbation 
then what will happen to this wave function? What will happen to the energy? What modifications will occur as a result of this perturbation? So we will now find these things and let's start first with the means they will be found in this order like the first order correction to the energy means some energy will be added with this one then first order correction to the wave function a wave function will be added to this one because this is sin zero sin zero is here now we will solve this equation and this equation means that energy will be corrected up to some terms wave function will be corrected up to some terms because we have introduced a perturbation here and now let's find the first order correction to the energy from that equation we know that this correction is psi n0 h prime psi n0 from this equation now i know what is psi n0 psi n0 is this and what is h prime h prime is this value so i will just put the values here and you can write this thing in integral form as well as in the bracket notation it is up to you but as integration is involved we will have to find the integral here the perturbation is exactly at the middle means at a by 2 we are having the perturbation so it's better to write this thing in the form of integral and now look here uh, I will do it uh, this will be the if I write this thing in the integration form then what it will be it will be integral from 0 this is the origin from 0 to a and then psi n0 conjugate psi n0 conjugate and the Hamiltonian the perturbed Hamiltonian and psi n0 with it and dx it will be the integral now put the values in this one so this will be equal to integral when I write psi n 0 conjugate so it will be the same thing it will not change because there is no iota involved so sign will remain the same multiplied by this one means the magnitude here the coefficient so 2 over a square root and 2 square uh, 2 over a square root of this one will become 2 over a then I will put h prime h prime is alpha times this alpha is a constant so I will write alpha here as well because it will come out of the integral so 2 alpha and then I will write the integral and the integral is from 0 to a sine it will become sine of n phi x over a then h prime is delta x minus a over 2 and then again sine n phi x over a and then dx now is delta function is not a derivative function that it will apply on this one so i can do multiply this with this this is the f of x so i can do multiply this one and it will become sine squared this is now equal that e n1 is equal to 2 alpha over a integral from 0 to a and sine squared n phi x over a and then delta x minus a over 2 and dx so here now I will apply the delta function and the delta function is that if I am having from minus infinity to plus infinity f of x delta x minus a dx such that a lies 
in this interval, then this is equal to f of a. So I can write that e n1 to alpha over a and now put this one. So for x you will have to put a by 2 and this comes out to be sine squared and n pi x over a and for x I will put a over 2 and a a will cancel and I will get 2 alpha over a sine n pi over 2 whole squared. I want to write it in this form so that our calculation is easier. Now 2 alpha over a is a constant sine n pi by 2. I know that pi by 2 is equal to 1 for sine. So now it depends on the value of n and here this will be equal. If n is odd, then I will get some values. And if n is even, then I will get 0. Because when n is, let's say, 2, starting from 0, n is equal to 0, then do we have 0 there in the harmonic oscillator? We are starting in the uh, infinite square well from n equal to 1. So n is equal to 1 is odd, n equal to 2. 2 n equal to 4. When it is 2, then 2, 2 will cancel and sine phi is 0. When it is 4, then it is 2 pi. Again, sine 2 pi is 0 and so on. So we will get 0 here for n is equal to even. And when n is odd, like it is 1, so it will be pi by 2, so it will become 1. It will be 3 pi by 2 it will become minus 1 but it is squared so it will become plus 1 so in all the situation sign will be either coming as 1 or minus 1 and it will give you this value just 2 alpha over a so it is 2 alpha over a for n equals odd and this is the first order correction to the energy means with this energy now 2 alpha over a will be added for but for even way for odd values of this one so for even values this all will give you zero means there will be no correction for even values because this will be the value plus for even values there is no correction while for odd values of n there is a correction